Hey there, it's, uh, it's Pat Flynn. I hope you're doing well today. And uh, if you're watching this video, I'm probably being blown away at the moment. What? Hey, it's Pat here, and this is my real voice. Uh, but what you just heard was a clone that was made in just five minutes using a tool called Eleven Labs. And man, this tech has gotten so good, and it's so scary. It was only a couple years ago I created a video about some other voice cloning tech, and it was very obvious to most of you that that was still an AI-generated voice. It still sounded a little robotic. It didn't have the right inflections. But this thing, at its current state, is almost indistinguishable with my real voice. I asked ChatGPT to write a poem about Philly cheesesteaks. I love Philly cheesesteaks. And I put it into Eleven Labs to read it as me, and here are some incredible moments where, I mean, just, this is a robot. This is AI cloning my voice. Listen. Uh, in the heart of Philly, where the streets hum and sing, lies a treasure of flavor, a truly marvelous thing. Provolone or whiz, the cheese debate rages on, melting into the mix, a gooey, delightful phenomenon. Every bite is a journey through layers of taste, a culinary delight, not a morsel to waste. In every juicy bite, a story unfolds of a city, a culture, and flavors bold. In every juicy bite, a story unfolds of a city, a culture, and flavors bold. Holy crap. All right, we gotta talk about this. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this kind of tech because this is a very debatable topic. In fact, I'd love to hear your position on it in the comment section after this video to see where your stance is on this. And I think it's important to learn about both sides, the pros and the cons, so that we can understand the decisions that are being made or where somebody else might be coming from. And I think we're gonna start with where most people heads go with this kind of tech, which is the cons. Number one, deep faking, misinformation, and privacy. This kind of stuff is already happening and you probably saw it from a mile away. Even celebrities like Mr. Beast or Joe Rogan have already had deep fakes about certain ads and products that they don't actually use and scams that go along with them. By the way, it is a political year, and so the misinformation that could be spread with this kind of technology could just be insane. Of course, when you recognize somebody's voice, you hear them, you trust what they have to say. But what if it's not actually them saying it? This is really dangerous. And even worse right now, scammers are using this kind of tech to clone the voices of kids to convince the parents that their kids are kidnapped and are held at ransom. This is just absolutely terrible, by the way. On that real quick, because this is of concern to me as well, obviously, uh, have a code word figured out between you and your family so that if something like this were to happen, you can try to get that code word and see if this was actually real or not. Number two, ownership concerns. We should own our own voice, right? Like that makes sense. However, what about musicians and artists and voiceover artists? This is starting to become a really sticky situation, especially, yes, of course, if somebody else is using their voice without consent, but what about with consent? Who gets paid? How, how do you get compensated for something like that? Now, in Eleven Labs, the tool we were looking at earlier, you can actually upload your voice, train it, and then have other people use it, and you can get compensated for that. In a portal like that, for that kind of system, that kind of makes sense. But what if you're a musician? Could your record label use your voice and use it without your consent? How, how does that even work? Be sure to read the fine print before you sign anything, by the way. Now, I even heard Simon and Garfunkel, the rock band from the 60s, singing a rendition of Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot. I like big butts, I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. And I cannot lie, that's actually really funny. But what's not funny is when you consider, okay, well, did Simon and Garfunkel approve of that? Did like, wh what happens there? Did Frank Sinatra approve his rendition of Gangsta's Paradise? Been spending most their lives living in the gangster's paradise. Probably not, because he passed away in 1998, rest in peace, but does, does his family get paid for that? Does, who, who owns that voice? And the third concern here, are for people in the industry, like voiceover artists, artists who voice characters in movies, in cartoons, in video games. This kind of tech is getting so good that it's pushing most of the people out of those industries. If you are not a celebrity in that space already and already have contracts in place, it's gonna be very difficult to break into it 
Because why would a studio pay somebody when they could just put a couple things inside of a program and get the voice that they need in the way that they want? Like many other AI tools, AI is pushing a lot of people out of industries that have been pretty secure for a very long time. Now, on the flip side, there are a lot of things about this kind of technology and specifically tools like Eleven Labs and Descript to get really excited about. Number one, it can help you become more productive as a creator. One of the other tools that I mentioned in another video, Descript, uses this kind of technology to help you when you make mistakes when you upload your podcast episodes. If you forget to say something or you made a mistake and you just wanna replace it, you can just replace it in the transcript and boom, it's already corrected because it is your voice. Perhaps you wanna read an audiobook or an audio version of an email newsletter. Well, this tech can do that for you. Number two, accessibility and assistive technology. Again, from a creator's point of view, imagine taking all your newsletters and all your blog posts and actually opening up that world to those who wouldn't normally be able to have access to it. Those who perhaps are sight impaired or those ju who just are driving and they don't wanna be reading or watching something, but they're able to listen to something that you've written, whether it's a, a book or a blog post or something else. Beyond that, this tech can help people who are speech impaired or have lost their voice because of something like laryngeal cancer or a neurological disorder. This tech would allow them to potentially regain their voice or get access to a voice to be able to communicate better and feel more welcomed and more integrated into the world. Next, the idea of preservation of these voices, right? The ability to be able to have a technology hold their voice and the intonation of who that person is in place for a very, very long time, whether a person might wanna use that for sentimental reasons or because it's more of, of a celebrity or a public figure. I mean, there are use cases for something like that. I don't know how I would feel if I was having a conversation with the voice of my great, 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 great grandfather, knowing it wasn't them, but it sounded like them. Maybe even more creepy would be somebody that was very close to me who I'd recently lost. I don't know how that might make me feel. Would I wanna do that? Would I not? I don't know, would you? I don't know, maybe a little 50-50 on that, but voice preservation, preserving. Why, why would that be a bad thing? More practically, I also think about the preservation of my own voice, right? I'm a podcaster, I do YouTube. If I don't have my voice, I mean, I lose those parts of my business. I am unable to create in the way that I want to create. By preserving my voice and using tools like Eleven Labs and Descript, I can be able to save my voice and use it again and again in different kinds of ways, even if I perhaps couldn't use my voice anymore or wasn't able to. So there are pros and there are cons. So where are you? I'd love to hear what you think about this or where you think this is going because it's definitely something that's not going away. We're gonna have to figure out how to uh, navigate this interesting landscape we're in in the world of AI, especially when it comes to voice. So are you afraid of your voice being replicated and misused perhaps, or does that excite you? Not the misuse of it, but rather your use of your voice and other voices to help you with your content creation, with your creativity. Let me know in the comments, and we'll keep talking about this as more and more technology comes out. And I'm sure there's gonna be some legislation about this. There's gonna be some decisions made uh, in the world of music and, and, and voice. Whew. Anyway, hit subscribe. Got a lot more stuff coming your way. And I appreciate you watching all the way through.